Hey guys, in this episode of the Roller Coaster Project, we're going to examine how to design a real roller coaster. I'm going to walk you through it. I'm not going to get too in detail with it, but I'll show you the basics, and together we'll learn how to design a working wooden roller coaster. Welcome to the Roller Coaster Project. Okay, if you can see behind me, I got actually two things on my right and left shoulder. Here we have my laptop, of course. It's displaying. Um, the real ride. It's actually going to be displayed at the Atlanta Maker Fair. This is October 3rd and 4th in downtown Decatur. So if you guys are in town, please stop by. Hopefully you'll have a decent amount of it built. Uh, right now, of course, we're just banging out all of the design calculations. We have through the first drop. It's going to be a sweeping curve. Uh, similar to uh, you'd see in great coasters. Uh, similar to their kind of design. And then if you also don't notice, this book right over here one of the biggest parts of designing any roller coaster is dynamics and statics. Now we're not going to get into it too much, but of course statics being things that don't move, making them stand up, so structures of the ride, and then dynamics will be the actual motion involved with the ride. And you'll see how they kind of play together, of course. Now even though a roller coaster looks like it's standing still, it actually flexes and moves with the car. Going through some of the calculations, what I start out with, me personally, I like to do it by hand. I start off with basic calculations, I make a lot of assumptions, and when it comes to design, in any kind of design, you have to make the initial assumption. So what I would usually do is find the distance that I'm about to travel in the X direction, so horizontally. From there, I knew there's going to be an amount of friction per support that's going to be lost due to the ride. That's the biggest thing that hinders a roller coaster from going up as high as it needs to go. So what I started off with, from my assumptions, I had to develop what are called curves. Now these curves, they used to be in older roller coasters, just circular, meaning based on circles. But what I had to develop, and what they develop now, are higher order curves. Now this is going to get a little bit higher math than maybe some of you are used to. You start getting into calculus and then even to differential equations. Now to match up one curve going down a hill to a certain degree, we then use calculus to determine the derivative or the slope of the tangent line to where another curve will receive it and make it pull out of the drop. But to save me the trouble of doing every support, because that's what we really need to know, I would throw it in my Excel program. And from there, I have the formulas listed out. After coming up with this curve, now this curve that I'm using had to be discovered via differential equations, and we won't get too in detail about that, but it's a second order differential equation. From that, I know that the curve will pull out with a certain radius of curvature. That radius of curvature is what gives you your g-forces. The wooden track is actually on its way, and the beauty of a wooden roller coaster versus, say, a steel roller coaster is as they build the supports and they set the ledgers to certain heights, they actually create what's called a Riemann sum. Now this is, yet again, this is starting to get into calculus, but what a Riemann sum is, under a curve, to find the area, you put a bunch of rectangles. Now these rectangles are more of an approximation, meaning they're not going to give you the exact number, but just like a wooden roller coaster, these supports represent very straight line patterns. These straight line patterns are then turned into the ride itself by putting laminate wood down. And as they offset the laminates, as you can see through this animation, this offsetting causes the actual curves of the ride. And in many ways, if you have a good contractor or a very good company, such as Great Coasters or the Gravity Group, they are very good at matching that center line of the ride to the curve that they design. And as close as you can get to the actual numbers they calculated, you get a smoother ride. So ideally, wooden roller coasters should be smoother than steel because you have steel on steel, much like a train car. However, due to wear and tear, warping with time, with temperature, or perhaps the park's upkeep, you actually get a very rough ride. Sorry about that, folks. The card apparently was full. I have to delete my older work. So, what I was saying is we went from the vertical profile, or the velocity up and down, using uh, kinetic energy equations. So, conservation of energy. So, energy in, potential, plus kinetic, minus your forces, your minus your work, 
is equal to your final potential plus your kinetic energy. Okay, very simple uh, Newtonian physics. So from getting those values in the vertical direction, I then project it along the horizontal pattern. From that horizontal pattern, I can develop lateral forces, banking on the turns, which this drop is going to have about a 50 degree drop, and we'll go into detail a little bit about how I did that. That's mainly because I wanted a maximum lateral acceleration of 1.2 g-forces. From the vertical numbers across the horizontal numbers, that gives you a three-dimensional curve. Okay, So crossing one plane with the other will give you a three-dimensional spatial curve. Um, so we should have something within a week or so. I'll actually show that the wood will be showing up um, a little bit later this week. From there, we're going to start putting it in. Um, if you notice from the animation, there's also something else in there. These anchor bolts will hold everything together because it wants to be a cohesive unit. If you've ever seen bridges, you notice this X bracing, this laminate, that everything's bolted together. And a roller coaster is no different. Uh, but we have a lot of great stuff coming up. As always, if you have any more questions, uh, I've had a few people reach out to me. I'm always willing, feel free to email me. Uh, leave in the comments. I'll send you a spreadsheet for basics of a roller coaster. A lot of people want to do uh, no limits. It's a very good program. Uh, I do it for more so animation just to kind of see the ride in full. Like, share the video, subscribe to the channel, and if you guys have any other things to offer, by all means, contact me. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy, and I'll see you guys soon.